Phantomus demo was put up on Steam and a few other places on July 14th, 2017. And sadly it wasn't until seeing someone on YouTube playing it that I'd even heard of it. I watched a little bit of the first stage and I knew I had to try it because it fit my taste in games very well. The game's protagonist is named Aurora Delacroix, and she just so happens to have the title of Angel of Death handed down to her from her late father Corbin, who fought and killed Azrael, who was the original Angel of Death. It would appear that sometime after striking down Azrael for being an all-powerful threat against mankind, that Aurora's father was murdered by Azrael's followers. And Aurora didn't take too kindly to having this happen, and is now on a personal mission to hunt down and destroy all of her father's killers one by one. One of the first things I could tell about Ananthema is how much the developers love games like Castlevania and Ghosts and Goblins. There are plenty of nods scattered all throughout the demo, and that certainly isn't a bad thing. This game is an action platformer, and just from the time I've spent playing it, I can tell you that there are plenty of both. Aurora has a scythe for a primary weapon, a crossbow that is like a sawed-off shotgun for a secondary, and sub-weapons of different types that she can pick up along her journey. The scythe has more uses than just attacking enemies though, because she can also use it to slide down walls and in a sense wall jump with it, as well as swing from certain areas. Controlling Aurora feels pretty tight, and with all the many platforms she has to traverse, that is extremely important. She also has a double jump that comes in handy with a lot of that because it makes for a lot more precise platforming. It really reminded me a lot of Super Goals and Ghosts. There are also little green orbs that she can break throughout the levels, and those give her sub-weapon abilities power. I made a nice little almost mini game trying to collect as many of those along the way as I could, even if I didn't really use the sub weapons all that much. However, there are a good deal of enemies that don't really get stunned from Aurora's scythe attacks, and they could take quite a beating before expiring, but for one good blast from the crossbow, they're toast. So saving that ammo for situations like that became very important. And in the second stage going through the forest, if I hadn't had the crossbow it would have made for many frustrating deaths from falling. I will say that using the crossbow does cause some knockback, so it can cause some deaths all by itself. So being cautious of where I was standing when using it was pretty important. The only control issues I seemed to have though was getting used to doing the hook slide and then the jump. If my timing was a little too slow, I would fall too far down and my jump wouldn't make it to the top of the platform. This really took some practice more than anything. The only other issue I ran into was when jumping from something like a vine, you have to hold up after jumping and this led to quite a few deaths from somehow missing the vines. I just had to hold up as hard as I could and hope for the best. I don't really think this is the game's fault, but more that my controller would sometimes not register me pressing up at the time. The graphics are actually quite interesting because the developer is using pre-rendered sprites, much like a lot of the games from the 90s like Killer Instinct and Mortal Kombat. It gives the game a very interesting look. The animations are actually pretty good and the backgrounds look really nice. It helps the foreground seem to pop out more in my opinion. I also like seeing the stuff scrolling in the background as I progress through the stage. You can tell a lot of work was put into making each stage unique and also nice to look at. The music is really good from what I remember too. The opening title screen music really got me in the mood for going into this action filled adventure. I didn't get to pay attention to all the music because I think I zoned out during some of the more strategic filled areas with a lot of pitfalls that led to instant deaths but I remember it being really good and nothing felt out of place or unpleasant. It all fit the mood quite well. The bosses were also pretty cool and I'm really looking forward to seeing what other bosses come in the finished game. The ones shown in the demo were three demons, a witch, and a vampire. If there were any more I wouldn't know because the vampire boss I had a bit of trouble defeating I must say. Her patterns are very erratic and don't leave a lot of time for counterattacks. If I did find a good opening to attack her, she would dash away in a seemingly invincible move, and the lower her health bar got, well, the more she would do it. So I took a lot of damage in a short amount of time as a result. But I probably just haven't figured out the proper strategy yet. There were also a lot of hidden upgrades that helped improve Aurora's powers. So it made me want to explore the levels multiple times to see if I could find more power-ups for her. One of them required a quick escape after obtaining it, so it will be interesting to see what challenges lie in wait in the finished game. All in all, I was impressed with this demo. Even though it took a few minutes for me to really get fully interested, once I got into it, it did a great job of keeping my attention. If the levels continue to be as varied as the demo, then it will be an easy purchase for me. So if you like Castlevania, Ghosts and Goblins, Ninja Gaiden, or any of the other fast retro style platformers, then I think you should check out this demo because it's well worth trying in my opinion.